Oh, yeah. You know what time it is. That's right. It's time for the Eddie and Webby Podcast. <laughs> Yo, I'm going to bust out some theme song action for you. Check it out. The Eddie and Webby Show is the place to be. They're talking about beer and pickleball and technology. So if you didn't know, now you know. Because it's time for the Eddie and Webby Show. On today's episode, Eddie and Webby take the show on the road. This is the Eddie and Webby Podcast. Oh, hey, how's it going? This is Webby, not Eddie. And I'm Eddie, and this is our 45th podcast. Oh, yeah. Episode number 45. That's right. And as you guys may have known, since you've all watched and listened to 43 and 44, this is going to be the conclusion of the three-part series of our live stream from the 2019 Beer City Open pre-party at Perrin. Yes, indeed. The thrilling conclusion to this uh, three-part masterpiece, the uh, the trilogy, the Beer City Open trilogy of podcasts. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and we are going to have somebody on here that is very well known in the pickleball world, very well respected, and also very well loved in the pickleball world. Uh, I'm excited for you guys to be able to hear this part of the the night's live stream because I was I was really impressed with that. I thought it was a great conversation. Yeah, I thought it was great. It was very insightful, very informative, and uh, a great way to end an absolutely epic night of the podcast. Uh, by far my favorite night of the podcast so far, and it, it, that's saying a lot because we've had so many epic nights, but man, that was a fun night. I totally agree. Let's not, uh, let's not hold you in suspense any longer. Let's go right into podcast number 45 now. But most everybody knows you. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself yeah. to the pickleball world? Hey, this is Byron Fresso, uh, pickleball referee, certified pickleball referee, trainer, and uh, everything guy for pickleball. An entertainer too. I know you like to uh, to sing during some timeouts and. Well, sometimes I do sing the national anthems. Uh, yeah, I've sung it at the nationals. I sung it at several tournaments at the national senior games. So nice. Uh, I, I get around in terms of uh, singing. But uh, also, my wife and I travel around the country via uh, our RV. Yeah. And uh, we go from tournament to tournament. Right now, we are on a, I would say, probably about a 12-city uh, tour. Uh, we started in uh, Arizona, uh, went across the country to the U.S. Open, uh, then went up to Atlanta for the Atlanta Open. And um, from Atlanta, we went across the country to Albuquerque, we remember we left Arizona right, to, Atlanta, yeah. to Florida, to Atlanta, back to Albuquerque. And uh, we flew to Boston for the Atlantic Regionals. Went up there to uh, manage the referees. Most of what I'm doing, I, I manage the referees uh, at these tournaments. I'm like the head ref slash referee coordinator. And so from here, we head down to Chicago. I'm doing the same thing at the Chicago Open. All right. Uh, in Pittsburgh, we're going to be refereeing in Pittsburgh. And so Chicago after here in Grand Rapids, then on to Winston-Salem, North Carolina, then down to uh, Birmingham, Alabama. Wow. Then across <laughs> to Texas for the Texas Open. Uh, from Texas, we're going to be flying to uh, California for the Western Regionals and then going across for the Las Vegas Open, then fly back to Texas. And from Texas, we drive up to... Um, to uh, St. George, Utah. Okay. For the wow. Huntsman and the <laughs> Fall Brawl. Uh, somewhere in there, I think we're doing the Las Vegas Open, too. <laughs> like Man, the exact that's days. quite a schedule right there. That's awesome, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but what I also wanted to talk to you guys about um, is in terms of professional pickleball, one of the things that uh, I'm traveling around the country with, along with my wife is uh, we're doing a lot of professional pickleball tournaments where we're instituting the referees into pickleball tournaments, yeah. the professional pickleball tournaments. And um, uh, pretty soon I'm going to be involved in an initiative uh, where we're trying to bring together all the different uh, professional tournaments out there. 
whether it's the Chicago Open, uh, yeah, Texas Open, hopefully the U.S. Open, Tournament of Champions, SoCal, all these different tournaments, uh, trying to put together an initiative where we can really bring it together and also have, uh, hopefully where the USAP can see this, to have a, a ranking system for the players. Um, I know if you're aware of, there's a tour next year called it, that's uh, under the auspices of the APP, the Association of, Association of Professional Pickleball. Uh, there's going to be a six-city tour uh, at a $25,000 purse per city, and then culminates oh, wow. in Punta Gorda uh, at the Pickle, Pickleplex, Pickleplex yep, in yep. Punta Gorda. Nice. That's the seventh one where it will be like the culmination of all the six tournaments and the players going to get down there and really battle it out to see who is the best professional in this series of tournaments. Uh, this tournament is going to be held in Chicago, Indianapolis, Nashville, Owensboro, Kentucky, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, I'm, I'm missing one city off the top of my head. How many total? Do you, it's six. Six, six total. Six, okay. total is seven. Seven, okay. Uh, but uh, six, first six tournaments will be pretty much you're going to gain points from from the, those tournaments. And then there's a culmination tournament in uh, Punta Gorda. Uh, where you're pretty much going to crown the king of professional pickleball <laughs> yeah, right. for this. Um, but we want to expand it beyond just these six tournaments, six to seven tournaments. Uh, the goal and the idea is to bring in some of the other professional tournaments around and uh, really expand professional pickleball and grow it to uh, somewhere in the line of tennis. Uh, all these professional tournaments in tennis where players will gain points from playing in the different tournaments. I was talking to a guy today who helped develop the algorithm for the USAPA's um, rating system. Okay, yeah. And see how we can develop a, a point system for these tournaments uh, where it should not matter that if a player plays in the first, in the top three tournaments uh, and one player plays in six tournaments, there should be a skewed algorithm that allows the points accumulated to even out the playing field. Uh, because, say the number one player, we all know this player is the number one player, the best player in the country. But because he's only playing in three tournaments, and a player who is less skilled playing in six tournaments, it shouldn't be that that player is seated number 10. Right. Yeah, that's a really good point, yeah. <laughs> okay. yep. You know, there's got to be a method in which... Uh, the points are skewed in such a manner that allows the number one player to be really shown to be the number one player. Yeah, I think also, really and truly, and I hope that USAP can get on board with this, really to develop a ranking system for professional players. Um, I think, first of all, they've got to define a professional. Yeah, that's a okay. great point. <laughs> um, great point. What is, it a, what is a professional player? Uh, in my own personal view, a professional is someone who plays in a tournament and they earn money from playing in that tournament. Yeah. However, like the amateur golf and professional golf, an amateur golf player can play in a professional golf tournament, but they cannot, and they earn prize money, they cannot take the prize money or they lose their amateur status. I think the same thing should apply to pickleball. If you want to remain an amateur, so to speak, and you play in a, in a professional tournament, any money you win, you cannot keep. You can donate it to charity, you can donate it back to the organization, something, but you cannot keep that money in order to maintain your non-professional status. So in that case, though, what, what advantage would you have to staying amateur? Just that you can compete at a little bit less of a high yeah, level? Well, it, it allows you to play, for example, right now in some tournaments, if you play in the Open Pro, you cannot play age. Yeah, so, right. Yep. Okay. But if you play a pro and you don't earn money, then you can go back and you can play age yeah. still. Because you're, you're not a quote-unquote a pro. Mm -hmm. You compete at right. a pro level, but you're not a pro. So, so pro means winning at a pro level, not competing winning, at a pro level. Right. Okay. Winning yeah. prize money Yeah. and earning that prize money. Now, you can stretch it out a little further because you're going to have the argument is that once you play in a pro tournament, you are a pro player. If does it, Maybe the only the first... Some tournaments pay th six deep, some play ten, pay 10 deep, some only pay three deep. The fact that you might finish 12, does that right. mean that you're no longer a pro? Yeah. <laughs> so the argument could be made that once you play in that tournament as a professional, you define yourself as a professional, you sign up as a professional, that's what you are. 
okay? Yeah. And it, there should be some contractual agreement that says, I, I am a professional player, and as such, I shall be deemed going forth a professional player, which means that I am not allowed now to play in an amateur, quote-unquote, age-related or skill-related tournament. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I like it. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 it would be nice to, to get a definition around it because I do feel like it's a little bit of a loose term right now, right? Absolutely. And it's not, it's kind of like, yeah, this is Barry that you can ride between it. So. Yeah. yeah, because, you know, you ask any quote unquote pro player, am I a pro player? And some of them will give you the response, well, no, not really, because I haven't earned a dime yet in prize money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Rob, don't look at me like that. And <laughs> 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 you know? And so, therefore, I'm not a pro. Yeah. But, no, there's got to be. And, and here's one of the suggestions that I would like to make uh, is that there should be two tracks on the, the auspices of the USAPA. One track that says, okay, uh, recreational slash amateur play. And the other track should be a pro track. There are different guidelines, different rules that address a pro, the pro side of the house as opposed to the amateur side. For example, racquetball. Racquetball has the IRT, and it also has the USAR. USAR is essentially the, the amateur side. The IRT is the professional side. So, therefore, they have your WIRT, which is the uh, women's yep. professional players. They are defined, and they have an agreement that says we are professional racquetball players. The same thing should occur in pickleball. You have that agreement that you sign that says I'm a professional pickleball player. And so no longer should... You compete at an amateur level because one of the problems that we have right now is a 5-0 player who does not wish to become a professional player in many tournaments they are forced to play at the pro level and compete against the pros because they are a 5-0 yeah that shouldn't be the case you know if you are a 5-0 then you're a 5-0 as an amateur player but right. not as a pro player but don't we see that on the opposite too yeah. where you have somebody that probably has one should be a pro player and is playing not in the open? Have we seen that too? That's very rare. Is it rare? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, most of the guys, I mean, Rob, you, you can come to this. Uh, you, as a, you as a pro player, uh, how do you feel Thank about you. that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope I'm not lose, using that term loosely with you. <laughs> you know, uh, and, and full disclosure uh, with Rob, uh, as you see, I, I wear the Onyx yep. shirt here. I'm not trying to plug Onyx, but Rob is on the Onyx team mm -hmm. also. Um, and we have, a, as part of Onyx, we have a pro team, a group of pro players, and we have our recreational slash amateur players. Okay? And those pro players, we know how we, we devise our contracts based on the expectations that, that they're playing at the pro level. Yeah. Therefore, there are, there are revenue uh, exchanges that go on with that player. Whereas an amateur player, essentially their contracts are a little different. We may pay for them their entry fees into a tournament. We may just provide clothing and paddles to them. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, yeah, there's all different levels yeah. to sponsorship, right? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, the world of pickleball is changing. And hopefully the governing body will catch up with the changes and you know, I, I said to them four years ago that hopefully they can, USAPA can manage pickleball because it would end up like boxing, which I would hate to see happen. You know, boxing, you have the WBAO, WBA, WBC, mm -hmm. all these governing organizations group, yeah. that think that they are the de facto uh, standard and their champions are the de facto champions for that given sport. And what I said four years ago is actually coming to fruition right now because you've got several organizations springing up to run their own tournaments. Whether it's yep. the APP, whether it's the WPF, uh, the U.S. Open is a little different. They're, they are an independent organization, but essentially the numbers that they command in terms of entries, they can create their own organization if they so choose. I think they have opted not to become a separate organization, but they have made a decision that the affiliation with the USAPA uh, would only be governed by the rules of the sport, but not necessarily by the terms and conditions that the USAPA would abide by for sanctioning. You know, because one of the requirements for the USAPA to be in a sanctioned tournament is to have all matches refereed. However, yeah. they have since modified that position 
and have what you call MMOs, metal match only mm -hmm. tournaments. And, and that seems like that's the majority of them I go to are the MMOs. And, and, would, and, would you agree with that? Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yep. And, and that's one of the ways in which the USAP devised a way in order to get tournaments to be sanctioned and get players to be part of the organization. Some of them are still resisting because they feel that, quote unquote, the USAPA is irrelevant, but I don't think they're irrelevant because, like any sport, you have to have a governing body. Yeah. And you have to have a body that says, okay, we are in charge and we are in charge of the direction and the growth of this sport. We manage the rules, we manage how the play is conducted, how business in the organization, the sport is conducted. So many people hope that the pickleball gets to the Olympics. If you look at the Olympic sport, there is no sport that in the Olympics where yep. there isn't a governing body. In addition to that, there is no sport in the Olympics where there isn't a referee or an umpire yeah. or someone to oversee the rules. Always there, yep. Okay. So to say it's irrelevant to have a referee or anything like that, uh, it's a fallacy in terms of taking the sport to the next level. Yeah. However, we have got to do a doggone good job in training referees, getting them up to speed so that players, when they get on the court, will feel confident enough to say that this referee knows what he or she is talking about and don't feel like it's a waste of time having a referee because <laughs> they can't make the call, they can't keep the score, right. they, they don't know where we are supposed to be when you ask them a question. Can, can I tell you real quick too, sure. so I, I played at a tournament here a few weeks ago and I had a referee and I'm so sorry if you're watching right now, I forgot your name. He was actually sitting right over there earlier today, and this guy was the nicest guy ever. And we, we record all of our matches when we are when we're in tournaments, right? Mm -hmm. We always post them. He asked me after I posted it to share the full match with him because he wanted to evaluate all of his calls right. to make sure that he called the game right. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he said that, thank you so much for what you're doing for this sport. Thank you for not like not only volunteering your time but also wanting to evaluate your performance as a referee out on the court. And I was blown away with that. And yeah. to me, I was like, I, I, wish, I wish there were thousands of him out there to be able to do that. And that is coming. Yeah. I mean, I think the USAP is doing a very good job in terms of uh, creating a product in terms of referees yeah. uh, that uh, would be one that players can look and say, well, man, that's fantastic. That was a doggone good referee. I appreciate that referee. Uh, that person really made me feel like I didn't need to worry about anything else other than playing my, my game. And, yeah, right. You know, and any referee who's yep. worth his soul will tell you that. You know, when they get out there, their job is to ensure that that player, the players, just yep. focus on what they do best, and that yep. is play. Yep. And not to have to worry about what's a rule interpretation, what, the, you know, this guy did something and they don't know how to right. rule on it. They call it like it is, yeah. yeah you know, yeah. And, and on the flip side, too, some players have got to recognize that referees are human. Yep. I mean, the yeah. NBA and the NFL and the MLB. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! We're getting there, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's the crazy Grand Haven crew. That was totally yeah. necessary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, completely necessary. <laughs> yeah. Made me lose, lose my train of thought. Yeah. <laughs> Byron, can I ask you a question real quick? Sure. Just to maybe That's going to cost you $2. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. You got that, right, Michelle? Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <clears throat> for perhaps, you know, like a 4-0 ref or a 4-5 ref, you know, a referee, an aspiring referee who wants to um, maintain that level that you and I both would like to see and we'd all like to see what what would maybe be like three or so tips you know that you would give to a referee who wants to hold himself to a higher standard doesn't matter where you start or where you end with refereeing you got to know the rules yeah know the rules it starts oh, with yeah. knowing the rules mm. it, because mm. that develops a sense of confidence within you that mm. you can adjudicate any situation and apply the correct rule to that situation. Give this guy a beat. Point. <laughs> Some good stuff right yeah, at any time. <laughs> Secondly, it's not about you refereeing. It's not about your ego. It's about the players. And it's about giving the players the, the platform 
to operate at their will, at their level, and not to worry about how <laughs> is a match. <laughs> Boy, this is loving and yeah, stuff. It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's chaos, man. I see it. Yeah. And so it, it, it takes a referee who's got the demeanor to stand out there and feel that they're going to manage this game. It's a management of, of the game. And allow the players to focus on what they do best. Yep. Uh, the third thing is being able to maintain some sort of control. There are times things are going to get out of hand. It's how you as a referee handle the situation what type of confidence the players have in you that you you may be wrong in applying the rule but the fact that you handle it with confidence and you didn't waffle in in uh uh, uh well uh, i yeah. think you know that will send a player in a tailspin and and lose all credit you cause you to lose all credibility so yeah. those are things you know maintain some sense of control not be dictatorial know the rules and also maintain that uh, the management of the game. Keep the game moving. Stay in rhythm with the players as a referee. Yeah, I, I, you know, just to speak for myself, and I know many of the, the, the top uh, certified referees out there. You see them out there, they're in charge. You know that they're in charge, but at the same time, they're not interfering. They're not interjecting right. themselves into the, yep. to the game. Yeah. Okay. They're there purely as a let's make sure the rule, yeah facilitator, but they own it. Yes, I I I know exactly what you're saying, and I love yeah. it. Yeah. Michelle, yeah. Michelle, did you have a question yeah. for Byron? Yeah, Michelle was patiently raising her hand. Yeah. Sorry, I do have a question for Byron. So, when there is a pro match, okay. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, when there is a pro match, and there are lines judges who disagree with the call and all four players disagree with the call how do you handle that as the main ref of the match because if everyone disagree with the call say that the call was in but the ball was out and even the opponents who made the shot that was called in was out what what would you say what would you say to that and how would you handle that situation? Okay. Uh, if I understand you clearly, because you said something that was Go a little ahead. confusing initially oh, to okay, me. Okay, okay. Uh, the line judges agree, disagree with the call, and then the players disagree with the call. Here's, here's the thing. You as a Every player. Every single player on the court would disagree with the call that the line judges. Okay, I'll, I'll, get to, I'll address that Perfect. subsequently. Thank Perfect. you, Michelle. That's your time. <laughs> <laughs> A shot is hit. Say, for example, Michelle, you hit a shot, and you felt that your shot was in on the other and, side. And so with the opponent. Thank you so much, Michelle. That's your time. <laughs> <laughs> and the line judges call the ball out. Okay? You disagree with it. Okay? And your opponent hasn't come into play yet. Okay? The line judges said, Out. Then you appeal to the referee. That's your next step. You appeal to the referee because you disagree with the line judge's call. Okay? Then you appeal to the referee. The referee would either say the ball was in or out if they saw it. Now, if the referee didn't see that ball land right. in... Sorry, Michelle, that's your time. <laughs> no, 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 no. But you know, what, if, what if the opponents object to what was seen... By the okay. Lions call. All right, let me get to that. Okay. okay. I'm going through a kind of chronological order here. Now, supposedly that the line judge didn't see the ball and put his or her hands over her eyes. Okay. Didn't see the ball, can't make a call. Okay. The, the, you appeal to the referee. Ref, did you see that? The referee says, I didn't see it. I can't, I can't make a call. Okay. Typically, what the referee will go to is the next closest line judge and ask them if they saw the ball in or out, okay? If that line judge says, sorry, I, I didn't see it, okay? Then you pull the players. All four of them have got to agree that that ball was out or that ball was in. And then the decision would be made based on the players all agreeing that that ball was good 
and the referee will go with your call. Okay. This is very interesting. This is a this this allows for a very delving hallway to walk down. As a matter of fact, I mean, if we want to go in that direction, um, uh, Byron, would you mind if I or did you? Yeah, I, let me add? also add one sure, other thing onto sure. this. Seeing that we've kind of segued into refereeing here, <laughs> one of the things as I talk about the referees knowing the rules, I think. Just as equally, players need to know the rules. Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. And here's why I, I, I say it. Oftentimes, I'm refereeing a match, and a player, a ball is hit past the player. Maybe both of them, they didn't really see the ball. And, and they start looking at each other. Did you see that? No, I didn't see it, man. Did you see that? No, I, 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 I didn't see it. So I'm standing there as a referee. Well, guys, why don't you appeal to me? You know, I saw it, but you right. know, I can't say anything that... And they yeah. should know the rules about the appeal process. <laughs> right. Yeah. And they look at each other and say, well, man, I, I didn't see it. You know, okay, referee, what happens? Well, if you can't make a rule on it, the ball is good. Exactly. But I, as a referee, I saw the ball out, but they didn't know that they could appeal to me as the referee right. to see the ball on their own call. That's a lack of knowledge of the rules. Exactly. And... And so yep. that sometimes I, I tell players, you can gain sometimes a point or two every match yep. if you know the rules. Byron, I have a question for okay. you. How do you feel about <clears throat> players overruling the referees? Wait, when you, the, the four players when in the scenario that I, I just described, the yeah. f uh, where it comes down to, you know, at, at some point in time, you know, I, I, let me back up. I always say the, if you have referees in a match, it's the referee's duty to ensure the calls are made correctly. However, like I said, we are all human, and sometimes we can make a mistake. And so, therefore, if there is an agreement by the players, and you, as a referee, know that you did not make the, you did not see the ball, so you can't make a call on it. I think it should be up to the players at that point if they all four of them agree. So you think there is a yeah. point when it when it should be up to the players? Yes. However, let me p point out a situation. Uh, I'm not going to call names, but I'll tell you the scenarios. Oh, we remember. Two si different scenarios. <laughs> we'll fill in the blanks. We remember. <laughs> one occurred at Las Vegas and one occurred at Nationals. Oh, yeah. Well, I remember both of those very <laughs> okay, well. Yep. You go right ahead. We won't say any names. So this opponent B hits the ball to opponent A court. A, the yeah, line court. judge said, out. Yeah. Okay. Opponent B that hit who hit the ball said, no, the ball was good. Ref, did you see it? No, because it was a little dark that evening. And I said, no, I uh, did not see it. The line judge, I went and pulled the line judge and the next closest line, they all said, you know, I saw the ball out. So now the player B says, well, why don't we check with the opponent? So they, without their referee's intervention, they check with the opponent. And the opponent said, well, you know, why don't you give the ball to them? You know, I, you know it, it, it might have been good. Just, just give them the point. As a referee, I said, no, I cannot do that. Because the line judge emphatically said it was out, and it's the line judge's call. Right. Whether he's right or wrong, yep. it's his or her call. Okay? Not the players. Not the player. In this situation, come national, uh, kind of the same teams... And it happened in reverse. And that player who had an opportunity to say, okay, the ball was really out, you know, uh, it should be their point, didn't own up to it. So afterwards, I said, well, this is why when I mentioned it in Vegas that the players is the, for this simple reason. Because now when the tables are turned on you, right. for you to stand up and say, okay, I mean, no, you're not going to do it. Right. Because it's the match on the line. So that's why you, you cannot allow the players to just arbitrarily just yep. make the decisions on their own because one time it might be in their favor and when it's against them, they may not make the same, reciprocate that uh, opinion with their right. opponent. Yeah. Okay. Good or bad, right or wrong. We see it. You put the referee in charge to make those calls. Yep. Then it's the referee's duty hey, Eddie, to make those can calls. Can I choose you on that before you take the... Yeah, cheers, man. Hey, cheers, yes. Us. Thank okay. you for of having course. Us. Yeah, thank you all for being here. Yeah. How awesome is this? I want to add. 
Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, because I, 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 they're I'm they're gonna putting sing, up the section close sign behind us. So I want to add, I wanna add just <laughs> yeah. this little thing. Like, back to you. Yeah, go ahead, man. In terms of refing, yeah, because it's an important part of the game. So I mean, I'm not going to neglect it. You know what I mean? And I sure. enjoy refing because it's important uh, uh, on many levels. Um, for me, there's two things, two two pieces of advice that I'd like to give to other fellow aspiring or what have you in terms of uh, in terms of refing. Let's hear it. The first one is, um, folks at home, take control early. Right? If you don't address it the first time you see it or right at the beginning, then it's going to become a problem later. You know what I mean? So if somebody's being kind of a hyena at the beginning of the game, hey, address it. Hey, that's not appropriate. That's not acceptable, uh, you know, um, behavior, behavior at, in this match. So I'm going to let you know right now. And if it continues, I'm going to, you know, I'm yeah. going to have to do something about it. You know what I mean? If you don't have that conversation, it's going to be a problem later. Yeah. Yeah. So take control of your match early. You are who is in control, and take control of that match early. You you ref the match and make it an evenly, evenly fair match, right? So that's you know one observation. I mean, I'm from Rochester, New York. There's plenty of hyenas up th hyenas up there. You know, <laughs> the mental warfare game up there is just yeah. nuclear. All right. So that's you know w one piece of advice there. And then the other one, which um, was given to me, which is really good advice in terms you know from one referee to an aspiring myself. And it was actually your wife, Marsha, who I. I heard, one of the best. Yeah, one of the best, if not, you know. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> was I heard her say that? I heard her give this advice to somebody else. Um, be able to forgive yourself, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that I missed that, or I should have done this, and now it's harping on you for the whole rest of the match, kind of basically unfocusing you from the match. You yeah. know, just like pickleball, you can't let a mistake that you made in a past point affect the next points that are coming, right? So as a referee, I made a mistake. This is what it is. Move on. Be able to forgive yourself. That was the, the advice that I had heard yeah. her give to somebody else, which I thought was really good. My mistake, this is what it actually is, play continues. You still have control. Even though you've made a mistake because you're human, you know what I mean? Um, that doesn't change where you stand on who's in control. That sure. doesn't change what level of control of this match you have. So maintain that control and, and uh, continue to do the job well that you plan on doing there, you know? So... Um, Take control of the match early and, and be willing to forgive yourself. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And, yeah. and just to wrap up my piece to address that, that's part of the best practices of any certified ref. Yeah. Is to take ownership of your own mistakes. You know, referee error, I will replay this or I will do this. Right. Marsha Fresso is my yeah. favorite ref. <laughs> As it should be. As it and should today's be. her birthday, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Today is her birthday. Happy birthday to Marsha. Yeah, yeah, we sang happy birthday, birthday to her earlier. Is it with Maggie yeah. Romanzi? That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. today's Maggie's birthday, too? Maggie yeah, today's I Maggie's birthday. Did you know that? I did. Oh, that, is that what happy the birthday, birthday cake was for? That was why the two yeah, kids right. are that's there. That's Maggie's birthday right. cake back there. Nice. Well, both of them. Because oh, two? Yeah. Andrea called me and said, you know, you want to get a cake? I said, yeah, go ahead. Nice. I'll take care of it. Very nice. I think you had a chocolate and a vanilla cake out there, so... You know, which one is which? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> guys, it's been really fun, man. Seriously. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, no, is, thank you guys for being on. This has been awesome. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Byron, Rob, Michelle, you guys are awesome. It's been so cool. Thank they're, you so uh, much. They're like yeah. mopping and sweeping yeah. the floor, so I think we're actually yeah. getting kicked out. We're right literally right getting kicked out of this. <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys. But it's been a blast. Uh, thank thanks you. for awesome. having me on. And of course. Of course. It. We're, we're going to be broadcasting all weekend, so we'd love to have you on again, all of you guys. Seriously. We'll see. Come on. We'll see. things I got to say. And thanks for doing the announcing during the match. Yeah. earlier today against My Kyle. Pleasure, that was man. awesome. It, 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 it yeah. added such an extra element that made it so much more entertaining. Which one of you guys were, was the mop handle and the mop? Which one was the mop? And which hey, was the that, mop does, that doesn't matter. Hey, it's not, it's not. Mopping it up with you two. That doesn't man. matter. That doesn't the matter. question who was the bug and who was the windshield. Yeah, yeah right. Good night. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys. Uh, yeah. Honestly. Thank you guys. Thanks, Eddie. Yeah. Thanks, Obi. Appreciate Thank it. Very much. You guys Thank are awesome. Guys. Wow. Well, that was quite the event, huh? Yeah, it was. I mean, I... I can't even describe how awesome that was. How, what, what's the time looking like? How long? Uh, how long has this podcast been going? Three right hours now? and thirty minutes. <laughs> wow! This we is just, gonna, this we, is gonna have to be two podcasts. Yeah, yeah this is gonna be have to be split up into a part yep. one and part two. This uh, has blown all of the other podcasts out of the water as far yep. as length. Yep. Um, but also <laughs> as far as content. I mean, like how many guests we've had on? What? Yeah. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly like I've forgotten how many people have come on, and at one point I left. You left. Yeah. We just let the show become what it is. Like, right. how cool is that? It was very cool. It was so fun. Yeah. And I can't wait to go back and watch it because I missed a good 45 minutes of it because I wasn't even here. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to, like, dedicate. I'm going to have to, like, take a half day off work to be able to listen to all this. Yeah. But 
So much oh, fun. Man. This Th- was incredible. Yeah. Thank you so much to Perrin for sponsoring us or yes. for, for hosting this. Thank you for sponsoring the Beer City Open. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, all the sponsors of the Beer City Open, you guys make this possible. So thank you. Thank you so much for that. I don't even know. I don't even know how to close this, but oh, that was man. awesome, right? Yeah, that was that was incredible. I just I can't even put into words how awesome that was. Yes, and yeah, just thank you to everybody. Like you said, Perrin, uh, Andrea Coop, and all the the tournament mm-hmm. directors for the Beer City Open, all the incredible pros and guests that we had on. I mean, I could just go on and on. This was <laughs> this day will go down in history as one of the the most fun days that I, I've ever had as far as uh, Eddie and Webby goes. Totally agree. As far as, far as pickleball goes, we love pickleball. We love you guys. This was our 43rd podcast. Thank you to all 43 that are still watching. We love you guys. And anything else before we close up? No. All I got to say is uh, this was incredible. This was an awesome time. And until next time, this is Webby, not Eddie, signing off. See ya.